Famicom is now two years old, and we have the debut of two new publishers for the system. I'm starting with Irem, as they're the more prolific of the two publishers. Irem had a distinctive cart style that for the first few years addressed a deficiency in the Famicom. There was no indicator to tell you that the Famicom was on. Well, Irem put an LED front and center on their cartridges. They also put instructions on how to play the game and a spot to write your name on the back. I looked at Road Fighter a couple of days ago. That was a very slim game concept done solidly. Zippy Race is that game's counterpart. It's another top-down racer where players go from leg to leg between cities, but it's that very slim idea done terribly. Zippy Race is a five-leg race, and you start out with the slowest motorcycle possible. If you complete all five legs, then it restarts with a faster motorcycle for you. But you can see how painfully slow the motorcycle that you start with is. It makes Zippy Race feel not very zippy. Of course, it has to go slow because they zoom the view way in. Even at this slow pace, the way it zoomed in, you barely have time to react to curves. And then there are the other drivers. All of them try to run you off the road, move faster than your motorcycle, and will continue to move to block your motorcycle until you're just barely behind them. There's no point in trying to maneuver through traffic, because what you have to do is wait until they stop moving so you can get around them. Crashing in Zippy Race costs you fuel. If that tank runs out, then it's game over. But because the fuel expense for a crash is so high, it's far more efficient to slow down even further when you're dealing with traffic. Especially on curves. Of course, you still might just get boxed in to the point that you can't maneuver and escape. You do need to pass as many cars as possible because at the end of each leg, your ranking in the race determines how much fuel you get back. There are gas cans scattered along the course to pick up, but the fuel you gain back from them is minimal. Not even one crash is worth. Also on the course are these white strips where they're considered to be wheelie zones. You can't really tell that you're doing a wheelie when you run into one though. On some courses, there will be these rivers that you have to cross, and sometimes there's a spot that you can trigger to jump over them. The race runs on the grassy roads between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, the desert highways between Vegas and Houston, the grassy fields between Houston and St. Louis, the vast desert between St. Louis and Chicago, and finally more grassy roads between Chicago and New York. So let's just say there isn't a lot of verisimilitude in the course design. As you near the destination, it changes from an overhead view to a behind the bike view, but you still have to pass cars. Passing those cars doesn't affect your race ranking, but you still have to pass them. I don't know how a racing game simultaneously feels like it's going too slow and has objects come up on you too quickly. But Zippy Race pulled it off somehow. With the cars taking up so much space and always behaving the exact same way to block you, it makes Zippy Race not a lot of fun to play. The lack of track variety doesn't help either. This one belongs in the bottom tier of the Famicom games we've seen so far. <laughs> 